Welcome, short episode, Dr. James Beckett, Sports Card Insights. You can see from the title, this is a discussion of Mark McGuire's true rookie card, RC. And this is dedicated to Ben Wilson about the cards. Had a nice uh, chat within the Hobby Hotline episode uh, a week ago. And I thought, well, Ben's arguments have merit, but what historically has been the case? So I dug out my archives of old uh, Beckett baseball card monthlies from back in 1984. Well, obviously in 1984, there was no, there were, well, actually there were, there were pre-rookie cards, minor league cards of, of uh, Mark McGuire, but no, no, uh, uh, U.S. Olympic card in 85 tops. Uh, that did not appear until the fifth issue of, uh, Beckett baseball card monthly. So Mark McGuire's, and it was designated, sorry, Ben, it was designated as an RC right from the beginning, as were all the tops, uh, USA Olympic cards. So that's March of 85 would have been, um, w- episode would have been, I mean, that, uh, that issue would have been produced, uh, or put to bed price guide wise in February, uh, mid February probably. But McGuire debuted at 35 cents. Can you imagine that? Um, well, and so I started looking back to see where the controversy began because Ben insists that, um, that uh, that should I think partly because he's a he's a big uh, Oakland A's collector, and uh, you know McGuire's not in a in a major league uniform. He's not in an A's uniform by seventy. By, by pardon me, by eighty seven he is, and uh, and so that's what where Ben has kicked in and, and really aggressively pursued the eighty seven tops. But in the first issue of Beckett Baseball Card Monthly, which is uh, tough to find, but I I have a copy obviously, uh, there wasn't even any readers right. Uh, there, there was the, the who's hot and who's not hot and cold expressed from the readers that were published, but no real uh, letters to the editor that we called readers right. Now, I guess that makes sense because there, there was no for that was the first issue. Uh, the second issue, uh, what the second issue which came out, which was December of 84, uh, there were things called letters to the editor, which became readers right. But I noticed in the price guide that, um, just with Don Mattingly, who was the key, Rookie card, the 84 tops was $3.25, the 84 Donruss was two and a quarter, and the 84 Fleer was two and a quarter. So my, not only has, has there been a meteoric rise there, but, uh, tops was perceived and, and sold at higher levels in the beginning, and Donruss, uh, overtook, and I didn't research exactly when that happened, but over time, that's what happened. Uh, so also, when you look at that, you find that there was, uh, Daryl Strawberry was one of the big guys then, and he had this 83 Tops uh, traded that was the uh, the box set that was uh, produced for dealers by Tops, and that was listed as an RC question mark, so questionable rookie card because it wasn't in a pack, uh, but his 84 Donruss and other 84 cards were, were listed as RC question mark because I wanted to really get input from uh, collectors and dealers out there. By the third issue of Beckett Baseball Card Monthly, that'd be the January of 85. There's two pages of readers write, and you're starting to see, well, feedback from, from our readers. They were generous with uh, telling us what they thought, and we, we loved getting a pulse on what was going on. Again, that was snail mail, uh, friends. Uh, the fourth uh, Beckett Baseball Card Monthly, which would then be February of 85, uh, there's a readers write uh, question asking about uh, these these uh, rookie cards that are questionable, asking uh, that uh, well, they just see it as a problem. There's confusion. Uh, in the fifth uh, uh, magazine, uh, the fifth, which is then March, I guess, of 85, there's comments in there. There's an article that's kind of criticizing the 85 Tops uh, Olympic subset uh, that McGuire in and lamenting the RC confusion in another uh, reader's right. Uh, in the sixth uh, magazine, the Beckett Baseball Card Monthly, uh, sixth issue, which would then be April of 85. That's the birth of Arrows. Uh, indicating the price movement from the month before. And that was pretty momentous. We had to figure out a way to do that, uh, which, uh, which worked out, but that added a dynamic element that turned out to be a good decision. And then finally, in the seventh, uh, by May of 1985, we had a, an editorial clarification and gathered a bunch of, uh, a bunch of, uh, uh, feedback from uh, dealers and collectors. I think we we prided ourselves in in really trying to get feedback not just from collectors or not just from dealers. But uh, the clarification was then printed out on the the inside back cover of what the rookie uh, definition was exactly. And so I'll read that to you. And this is for for Ben and others. But it says RC. This is the rookie card, the player's first appearance on a regular issue card from one of the major card companies. Uh, 
again, it, I don't know that we would have had an exception for not being in a, a major league uniform. I, I take Ben's point there. He's, he's not way off base, but uh, when you look back at the historical record from the very beginning, the McGuire card has been listed as an RC. And when you have an 85, 1985 RC, that would make the, uh, the uh, 87 issues that Donruss and the, and the uh, tops be kind of first tops card, not his second tops card, first Donruss card, uh, still an interesting card, first card in major league uniform. And so Ben, you're welcome to uh, buy and sell those. Uh, ultimately, when we we're doing the price guide, we could have all the opinions we wanted, but the the truth was in what people paid. And if they pay more for one than the other, then they're uh, preferring that in in that sense. So, thanks Ben for the suggestion. Thanks listeners for uh, coming along, and we'll be back again tomorrow with another episode.